today's topic is about the trial frame you know that the trial frame is actually a device which allow different types of the lenses in its different compartments you know that there are different types of the lenses like we can correct our refractive errors like myopia with the minus lenses we can correct our hypermetropia with the plus spherical lenses we we can correct our astigmatism with the cylindrical lenses and you know that there are different types of the astigmatism like we have simple astigmatism in myopia and hypermetropia we have compound astigmatism like myopic compound astigmatism or hyperopic compound astigmatism we have mixed astigmatism right so we need different types of the lenses like spherical and cylindrical lenses right we have different accessories in our trial box so we need a trial frame which has many compartments to adjust that lenses in this video we will learn about the different adjustable settings and compartments of the trial frame so this is a universal trial frame and we will discuss about the different parts of the trial frame of this universal trial frame first of all we will discuss about its different compartments as you can see there are three different compartments as you can see here these are three different compartments of the universal trial frame and now we will discuss about the placement of the lenses in these compartments like as you can see this is the first compartment over here this compartment is used for the placement of the high powered lenses like if we if you are prescribing a high powered lens uh, to our patient like in hypermetropia we can prescribe in high hypermetropia we can prescribe uh, more than plus 5 lens or in high myopia like pathological myopia we can prescribe high minus lenses like minus 6 or minus 7 lenses so those high powered lenses will adjust in the first compartment now the question is that why we need to adjust our high powered lenses in the first compartment right so the answer is the bvd the back vertex distance right you know that the back vertex distance is actually the distance between uh, the anterior surface of the cornea uh, to the posterior surface of the lens right so if the lens if the power of the lens is more than minus 5 or plus 5 we have to be very careful about the back vertex distance you know that with the different back vertex distance the power the effective power of the lens will changed right so you have to put your high powered lenses in the first compartment and now we will learn about these different values you can see this value is representing the zero value and this value is representing 5 mm and this is of 5 mm right so what is the purpose of these values so as i mentioned that these values are for the measurement of the back vertex distance we have discussed about the back vertex distance you know that the back vertex distance is the distance between the anterior cornea to the posterior of the lens suppose i put a lens over here right and now from this lateral side i will see that how much the distance is between the posterior of this lens and anterior of the patient's cornea right so we can easily measure the back vertex distance with these values so these values are for the measurement of the back vertex distance and you know that the back back vertex distance is effective when the patient's power is more than minus 5 or plus 5 so we can see we can measure our back vertex distance with the help of these values right we can simply we will adjust our spherical lens before the patient's eye and now we can simply find the distance between the back of that lens to the cornea of the patient right as you can see we can find the distance between the cornea of the patient to the back of the lens so this actually these values are for the measurement of the back vertex distance and now the second compartment this one this second compartment will use we can use this second compartment for the spherical lenses so we can use our spherical lenses in the first compartment like we have a myopia of minus 1 so we can adjust this lens in the first compartment if we do not have any high powered lens right so we can adjust our spherical lenses in the first compartment 
but if we have a high power lens so we will adjust our high power lens in the first compartment and then we will adjust our spherical lenses in the second compartment like this right now our lens is at our second compartment but as i said that if we do not have any high power lenses then we can adjust our spherical lens in the first compartment like this in case of myopia or in case of hypermetropia and remember one thing that your compartment clips these clips should should be very smooth and adjustable right so we can easily put our lens in the trial frame so as you can see our first compartment is reserved for the spherical lenses this is our spherical lens which is plus 1.5 right and now the second compartment is for adjusting the cylindrical lens right so we will adjust our cylindrical lens in the second compartment you can see this is our cylindrical lens you can see you can visibly see the excess line in the cylindrical lens so we will adjust our cylindrical lens in the trial frame according to the axis so suppose our axis are 90 degree so our spherical lens is plus 1.5 and cylindrical lens is at 90 degree so as you can see here our two compartments are reserved one for the spherical lens and second one is for the cylindrical lens right and the third compartment and the last compartment over here last but not the least this last compartment if i can focus over here so this compartment which is the last one this compartment is for the trial box accessories suppose if you want to put a pinhole you will put your pinhole in the last compartment over here right we have a detailed video on pinhole you want to see if you want to see you can watch the link is in the description and we can use our next accessory which is called stenopic slit right we can fix in the last compartment or you want to put any filter like red filter or the green filter you can put in the last compartment so the medox rod every accessory you can like the prisms medox rod and the red and green filter the pinhole the stenopic slit you can put in the last compartment and you can use the very important accessory which is called the jackson cross cylinder in the last compartment as well now except these three compartments we have another compartment in the back side and remember this is very important this compartment this compartment this one and this one these two compartments are the for the addition lenses for the press biopic patients right we can put our addition power in the back side we can put our spherical lenses cylindrical lenses accessories in these three compartments but we will put our addition lenses to the press biopic patients in the back side compartments and now finally we will discuss about the different adjustable settings you can see this knob can rotate this knob can rotate this knob can rotate so we have different rotatable knobs over here so we will learn about the different functions of these knobs so first of all as you can see this knob you can rotate it from here and this rotating knob is for the adjustment of the cylindrical lenses for the adjustment of the axis of the cylindrical lens like if we have our spherical correction was plus 1.5 right and our cylinder was 0 0.75 like this and you know you can see a cylindrical line over here if i can show you this is cylindrical line right and right now this cylindrical line is at 90 degree but i need to get the 120 axis so i can easily rotate this knob to realign my axis right so this rotating knob is for adjustment of the axis of the cylinder and now this knob as you can see as i'm rotating this knob this arrow is rotating as you can see 
आई एम रोटेटिंग द नॉब एंड दिस एरो इज रोटेटिंग दिस रोटेटिंग नॉब इज फॉर द एडजस्टमेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट पी डी द इंटर पीपुलर डिस्टेंस द आई पी डी राइट सो एज यू नो दैट डिफरेंट पेशेंट हैज डिफरेंट आई पी डी द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द पीपल राइट सो वी कैन एडजस्ट हेयर द पेशेंट पी डी द मोनोक्यूलर पेशेंट पी डी राइट इफ द पेशेंट हैज इट्स थर्टी फाइव पी डी और आई पी डी इन द लेफ्ट आई सो वी कैन एडजस्ट दिस एरो एट शार्प थर्टी फाइव डिग्री राइट सो वी कैन रोटेट दिस नॉब एज वेल टू रोटेट टू फिक्स आर पी डी राइट सो दीज नॉब्स आर फॉर द पी डी ऑफ द पेशेंट यू कैन सी द पी डी ओवर हेयर सपोज आर इन लेफ्ट आई दिस इज लेफ्ट आई आर पेशेंट पी डी इज यू कैन से ट्वेंटी फाइव एंड इन द राइट आई द पेशेंट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव सो वी कैन सिंपली as you can see this arrow is aligned with the 25 and suppose in left eye our patient's pd is different like it's 27 more or less so we can adjust our pd our desired pd or the patient's pd by rotating these knobs right and now as you can see there this is the nose rest right and with the help of the this knob at the top we can adjust this knob this nose pad or you can say the nose bridge of this trial frame we can adjust by simply rotating this knob we can make it more clear with in this trial frame so we can simply rotate this knob and we can move this nose rest and now finally we will discuss about this knob the knob at the back side of the frame as you can see as i am rotating this knob the lug is going downward you see and as i am rotating this in opposite direction this lug is going upward so this knobs these knobs are actually to maintain the pentoscopic tilt you know that the pentoscopic tilt is actually uh, the angle between the top of the lens this top of the lens and the bottom of the lens that how much this bottom of the lens is towards the cheeks of the patient that angle is called the pentoscopic pentoscopic angle hope every single concept regarding the trial frame or universal trial frame is clear We'll see you in the next video.